Welcome back to ALPB Roundup. I'm Ryan here with a little late night live recording of the Daily Roundup. Lots to talk about. We're just going to kick it right off starting this thing on Long Island where it got rough late for the division leading blue crabs. Things started off slow as a bases loaded walk to Chris Shaw in the first will be the lone run until the fifth inning when Vladimir Frias and Lou Ford, that man, would have RBI singles that gave the Ducks a 3 to nothing lead. The Ducks would tack on one in the seventh before exploding for five in the eighth inning on their way to a 9 nothing win over the Blue Crabs. Offensively for the Ducks, Sal Giardino went two for five with a home run. He is now batting 301 on the season, as he should be. You know that stash is batting a thousand with the ladies. All right, so he's like married, but so like, nah, I guess. But also kind of like, yeah, right? Because like if you were to like straw poll the whole like ballpark and be like, yo, is this the sickest mustache ever? Well, Squad would be like, yeah, bro. I digress. LJ Mazzilli, he went three for five with a double and an RBI. However, the man of the hour was Darren Downs. He goes seven shutout innings, allowing just two hits and striking out ten, all the while not breaking 90 on the gun and with a Twitter bio that describes him as a retired-ish baseball thrower. I already said on my Instagram story today, this man might be a vampire who cannot be trusted, but he does earn the AOPB roundup game ball. Dylan Pfeiffer, uh, he has now allowed just one earned run in his first 13 and two thirds in the Atlantic League. The pride of Widener University, the bad man from the bad land of Chester, PA, man, by way of Allentown, not one from the Bruce Springsteen song, The Other Allentown. So far, he's been a tremendous signing for the Ducks. He goes to scoreless tonight to finish the shutout. Severio took the loss in this one for the Blue Crabs, allowing four runs over seven innings of work. Not a bad day for him. Stretched out to 110 pitches. Props to him. But unfortunately, he falls to 1-6 and six on the year. We have a great pitching matchup tomorrow in this series as the Blue Crabs look to hold their division lead by sending Daryl Thompson to the bump to take on the red-hot Scott Harkin, another great signing by the Ducks midseason. The Barnstormers then had a chance to tie the Blue Crabs, but they would instead lose their third straight, seemingly doing all they can to not win the North Division right now. York is heating up at the right time, having won nine of their last 14 all against divisional opponents as they're halfway through 28 games against divisional opponents. They took this one 13-6 over the Barnstormers. The Revs man should do something easy, which is scoring runs early on Lancaster, and they finish by doing something difficult, which is preventing the Barnstormers from scoring a zillion runs to come back in it. For York, a five-run first and a four-run sixth would do the bulk of the damage. Offensively for the Revs, Carlos Franco went two for four with a grand slam and five ribbies. He takes the ALPB round of game ball. Milky Mesa went five for five on the day with an RBI of his own. And Josue Herrera homered in one of his two at-bats. On the mound, Joey Lara had a rough night, but the bullpen looked terrific against the high-powered Barnstormers offense. York's bullpen went five and two-thirds scoreless, allowing just one hit and striking out ten. Caleb Gindle, he did have himself a day for Lancaster. He went three for five with two home runs in the loss. So we now have a tie at the top of the home run leaderboard as Caleb and Josh Sala have 29 home runs. The lesson here is that when it comes to home runs, tough to pronounce last names, man. They produce them. That's the source of it. You got tough to say last name, you're in business, baby. Donald Goodson, he had a tough night in relief as his velo continues to drop. Now, I'm a big Donald Goodson guy, and not just because he's a former Utica unicorn. He didn't break 97 tonight, and he shows signs of wear, but you got to keep in mind, he does have a past as a starter, but he has doubled his career high in appearances this season already, <clears throat> and that's a lot, man. The act of getting warmed up, especially when you're in the relief of vibe and like you're kind of in that rhythm routine, you're getting warmed up. At days where you get warmed up and then don't get into the game, you sit right back down. Games when you get in, you got to cool down after long nights, a lot of stretched out outings where you might be throwing more pitches than usual because of the Barnstormers pitching situation. Something to keep in mind. So nobody go judging Donald Goodson too harshly for some bad results right now. The guy's going to get there. I think he's a very high potential guy coming out of the Atlantic League in the future. So we'll just keep an eye on Donald Goodson and hope for good things for him. Dom Di Sabatino, he also had a difficult outing, allowing six earned over five. The entire North Division is now within two games of each other. The Blue Crabs, they hold a one-game lead over the Barnstormers 
with the Ducks a half game behind them and the Revs a half game behind the Ducks. So it is getting crazy in the north and we still got like two weeks worth of divisional matchups going on like until we split them apart again to play the south division speaking of the south division lexington's pitching implosion continues as they fall to west virginia by a score of 16 to 8 henry owens became the first pitcher to strike out 100 batters but he did so in his worst start of the season first pitcher of the season by the way i'm sorry not like ever that'd be wild and kind of like what would daryl thompson be doing for the past nine years of his life anyway i digress again he allowed 12 runs over three and a third, walking 10 guys. And don't point to the robo zone here. Like, I like Henry Owens a lot. No, no, though. West Virginia walked one batter over that same time frame. This is a Henry Owens thing. He's had walk issues in the past. He's having control issues again now. He threw 117 pitches, 60 of them for balls. 40 of those 60 were high or low only. And now I'm sure a lot of that was because he threw 117 pitches. He was getting really worn out. It was a brutal three and two thirds of an inning. So a lot of that's probably just trying to find that spot as he's on his, uh, in his release point, leading to high and low. But it's that was a brutal start. I watched as much of it as I could, but I had to eventually just flip over to Lancaster and just hope for the best there. Brandon Phillips, Michael Choris, and Courtney Hawkins all homered in the loss for Lexington. Arcia and Betancourt homered for West Virginia to push Eric Sakula to the win despite a rough outing for him. He deserved it. I mean, he's had some good outings that didn't pay off for him. So a rough outing for Eric Sakula, ending in a win. That's good for him. I think he's 8-7 and seven on the season, just off the top of my head. Arcia would end up going 3-5 for five with 3 RBI. He earns the game ball in this one. Lexington has seen the drop-off that comes with losing top players as a season goes on. In, his, in their first 50 games, they were 31-19, and 19, allowing just 5.7 runs per game. I say just because it is the Atlantic League. The average run differential for them was over two for like per game. So they were scoring on average two more runs than they were allowing per game over their first 50 games. In their last 38 games, they've been 13-25. and 25. They're 8.7 runs per game allowed. That's three more runs per game they're allowing over the last 38 games, and they're losing these games on average by 1.1 runs. So that's about a three-run swing in the wrong direction, almost entirely in the runs allowed category. So while Lexington is working to make the most of, now remember, they've already clinched a playoff spot, so it's just gathering up a roster they feel can last, it is worth pointing out that it's still not getting better. In their last 10, they're 3-7, and seven, and they've been allowing 11.5 runs per game over that stretch. Offense is still answering, only losing by 1.1 runs per game. So that's staying on pace, but they just can't keep up with how quickly the pitching is falling apart. So we'll see what Lexington has up their sleeves as we approach the last month of the regular season ahead of the postseason that they already know that they are in. Finally, in high point, the Honey Hunters squandered a very good Sam Burton start. What a shame. Burton went six innings, allowing just two runs, leaving the game with a 5-2 to two lead. However, four runs scored in both the 7th and the 8th by the Rockers would put this game out of the reach. High point wins at 10-6. to six. For high point, Tommy Lawrence labored through five innings, allowing five runs on 10 hits, but the bullpen backed him up as the offense found their legs late. Quincy Lattimore had a three RBI day and Johnny Field homered off of Burton for the only two runs that he would allow. Ryan Jackson also homered for Gastonia. Offense was spread all over, so I'm just going to give the game ball to Sam Burton for his effort in what would become a wasted to start in the no decision. High Point now leads West Virginia by a game in the standings with Gastonia a few games back and Lexington a few more back. Uh, West, Virginia, <laughs> Wexington, West Virginia and Lexington play two on Wednesday, but the power cannot overtake first uh, high point for first place because the makeup game portion of this twin bill will be a first half game being made up. So we'll go into the first half standings, not the second half. So while it doesn't have anything to do with um, the second half standings, it does have something to do with the overall standings for the year, which is the tiebreaker. However, high point is well up on West Virginia right now as far as that goes. So uh, more than likely will not have too much of a consequence with Lexington already being in the playoffs and with West Virginia having such a brutally bad first half, even with a good second half, they are really, uh, they're probably not going to fall back on the overall record for the wild card or the tie break. So that's something to keep in mind here. Uh, moving right along. That's what I've got for you. I, I... all right, we'll talk about it for a minute. <laughs> I'll, uh, if you were watching the past couple days, you know, there was some drama with Lancaster's Ross peoples. Uh, I caught wind of it at a point, but I couldn't get anybody to go on the record for me. 
Um, regarding what went down, uh, as you may recall, there was sign stealing allegations. We knew that Ross Peoples was uh, pushed or sur <laughs> push, uh, suspended uh, for several games by the league, or at least asked not to manage for several games by the league. And the uh, reason given was for sign stealing issues. Now, that was given not necessarily by the league, but it was given by several sources uh, I talked to around the league, and it was a uniform thing coming from both sides of the situation. Now we find out that it was not actually sign stealing. It was, in fact, a violation of COVID protocols. Simply, uh, seems that Ross had somebody in the dugout uh, who was not supposed to be in the dugout, who was not either vaccinated or tested or whatever the rules are that they have. I'm not too well versed on it, but that is the cause of this issue. It does sound like perhaps it was not the first time this happened. I don't know that for sure, but again, that's what sources have said. But sources were pushing a completely different story prior, so I don't know where to go with that. Uh, but that's your follow-up piece on what's going on with Ross Peebles and uh, Lancaster. There should be, I think, one more game that he will not be managing. Doing the quick math. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. We're going to Wednesday. No, he should be managing on Wednesday. So that's your Ross Peebles update. Should be seeing him managing again for Lancaster tonight. That's all I have for the Daily Roundup. It was a long one. I'm sorry, but we had a lot to talk about. I am looking forward to another great night of competitive baseball. Five games on the docket tomorrow. Watch some baseball, enjoy yourselves. If you are in the path of uh, at least the side path of this hurricane coming up, stay safe, stay dry, and enjoy yourselves. I'm Ryan from LPB Roundup. Have a good one.